Let's talk about binding energy and Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. That's why I put this one here. You matter unless you multiply yourself by the speed of light, then you energy. Uh, and actually, that's even wrong. It's supposed to be a speed of light you know, squared, if anything. So, oh well. Well, let's see. So we, uh, let's learn about binding energy. And what that is, is that is the energy that's released whenever you make a new nucleus. In other words, when the nucleus is assembled from its constituent parts. So when you make a new nucleus, then there's energy that's released. And of course, if you want to break apart um, a nucleus, then it costs you energy. That's the same energy here. And we call this the binding energy. That's this E equals mc squared. That's the E from there. So what's interesting about it is that if you have a reaction that happens, Turns out if you could weigh the left side, you know, like the before, and then you can weigh the right side, that's the after, turns out the weights, the, the masses don't equal out. Some of the mass goes missing. In fact, that's this quantity we call the mass defect. So the mass defect is this difference in mass. You could say it's like a delta M if you wanted to write it that way. Now, luckily, we have an equation, and I mean, it's pretty much the equation that everybody knows, right? If you ask someone, hey, Einstein's famous equation, most people know this equation, but they don't actually know what to do with it. So that's actually the interesting part here. So we're going to be digging deeper into this. So for, remember, again, this E is the binding energy. That's this energy that's released whenever you make a new nucleus. Now, what's interesting about it is we're measuring it in either joules or most often we're actually using electron volts. So don't be afraid to use those, okay? Then we've got mass defect. That's your missing mass. That's this, this amount right here that, you know, that, that went missing here. Um, well, that's either in kilograms, which you're used to. And then we've got two different units now. We've got U, which is called an atomic mass unit. Um, or we can use it, uh, we can measure in MeV per C squared. And it turns out that looks like a weird unit, but it actually it's a great unit. It's basically a lazy person's unit, and I'll, I'll show you why. That's because one atomic mass unit, you don't have to memorize this, this is in your data booklet, but one atomic mass unit is equal to this magic number, so this 931.5 mega electron volts per C squared. And then, of course, then you have to multiply all that by c squared. So not just by c, like over here. You actually multiply by the speed of light, and you're supposed to square it. So what actually happens in a decay, just to reiterate, when a nucleus is created, and this could be either through fusion, which is when you go from lighter elements to heavier elements, or fission, where you go from heavier elements to lighter elements. But whenever you make a new atom, well, then some of that mass was turned to energy. In other words, we have this equation, E equals mc squared, that's going to drive this. An example of that could be, for example, our sun. So let's just say I draw a nice little circle here. Let's see, there we go. And let's say this is, this is the sun. All right, so our sun, for example, uh, what's going on in its core? Well, it's actually having nuclear fusion. It's converting hydrogen to helium every second of its life. So right now, as you're watching this video, the sun is burning millions and millions and millions of kilograms of hydrogen and turning them into helium. And every time you make a new element, what happens? Ah, you release some energy uh, because some of the mass went missing. And that energy is in the form of, well, let's see, it's in the form of heat, for example. That's why stars are hot. And it's in the form of light. That's why stars are bright. So you ever heard that, you know, that nursery rhyme, you know, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Well, there we go. Now I know what it is. It's a big ball of hydrogen gas that's undergoing nuclear fusion. And the reason why the star is hot and bright, it's just a consequence of this binding energy, this energy that's been released because you're making new atoms all the time. So let's do an example. Let's look at radium. Remember I said before, you don't have to memorize the periodic table. You're going to be given the hints that you need. So we know that radium, for example, we're told uh, 226, that's the number of nucleons, 88, that's the number of protons. All right, it undergoes alpha decay to give radon, Rn. And we're supposed to write the decay equation. You have to remember, what is an alpha? That's the one thing you had to know. You had to know that an alpha particle was a helium-4. So it's helium-4 here. You had to know that. So let's go ahead and solve this then. So that means, uh, well, I can start off with this radium here. So I'll just write it down like this. So I'll start off and say, well, radium, which is uh, element number 88, and it's 226. And that's going to lead to, let's see, this alpha particle. So that's going to be helium-4 plus, and then we have to have radon, sure. But I don't know the values that go here. But good news, I can figure them out. Because if you're a little bit of a detective, you know this bottom number has to be conserved the number of protons. So this is 88 total. Well, that's on the left side. On the right side, we've got 2 plus something must be 88. 
Hopefully that makes sense. This has to be 86. And on the other side, let's see, we've got 226 on the left side. We've got 4 here. What number makes this all work? 222 two, two will work because 222 plus 4 will be 226. There we go. We've solved this. Not so bad, was it? Now we're looking for how much energy is released in this reaction. And we're told the masses of radon, uh, of radium, and of helium. Now what you might be tempted to do would be to just use this equation directly. In other words, this E equals mc squared. And here's what some students do that takes them a long time. What they do is they take this energy, this mass, sorry, this mass right here, and they're going to convert that mass into kilograms. And then they'll do this whole calculation. They'll get their energy in joules. And then when they're done, they'll convert it to mega electron volts. I mean, you could do that. It's not wrong. It's just not very efficient. So let me show you why it is we use these atomic mass units. So although there's a lot of decimals here, well, we can still do this. So let's first of all uh, deal with, for example, we've got the left side and the right side. So I'll say left hand side. And I'll say right hand side, or we can say like before and after, doesn't matter. So if we do this right here, let's see, we've got one uh, radium, so that means, oh, we've got this number right here, so this is 226.0254, we're going to add that, oh no, we're not actually going to add it to anything, that's going to be it, it's going to be this U. The right side, however, is going to be helium, which is 4.0026U, all that plus um, radon, which is 222.0176U. Two, two, two now all I gotta do now is just get out my calculator and let's do this. So I've got 4.0026, I'm gonna add that to 222.0176. Two, two, two of course I could have done this by hand, I'm just being lazy. So I got 226.02. Two, two, okay, so these are my totals, right? My left hand side total was this, my right hand side total is this, and if I do that subtraction, so 0 0.0254 minus 0 0.0202, then I get the mass defect. All right, well, that's going to be 0. Point, let's see, 0, 0, and that's going to be 5, and a 2, and a U, of course. And how did I get that mass defect again? I just subtracted them, right? That's all I did. So this now is what I needed. I needed this equation right here in order to put into E equals MC squared. So now I'm ready. Okay, so I can say E equals MC squared, and I'm going to just put in these values. And watch carefully what I'm going to do here. It's actually going to be pretty awesome. So I'm going to put in the mass, which is again this 0 0.0052, and now I've got to do U. And what's a U? You can look that up uh, in your data booklet, and one atomic mass unit is 931.5 MeV per C squared. That is actually what one U is. Okay, so this is really important. This is 1u. Now, don't forget, though, I'm not just doing e equals m. I'm doing e equals m c squared. This whole mess here is m, but I've still got to multiply by c squared. And look very carefully why this is beautiful, because this is units have been designed to save you time. Look, it already crosses off the c squareds for you. Yay! So that means I just got to do 0 0.0052 times 931.5, and I've got my answer. All right, so let's actually just do that. So 0 0.0052 times uh, 931.5, and I end up with an answer of uh, 4.8438. And what are the units of this? Well, they're mega electron volts. In fact, do you notice I didn't have to do any conversions whatsoever? This is why I really like using atomic mass units, especially, well, if you're looking for an answer at least in mega electron volts, then it's really nice to use atomic mass units because then this U already has this mega electron volts and it already takes care of the C squared for you.